Uh, we are live now. Please start. Okay, sure. Hello. Uh, good evening. Good morning, everyone. So today, uh, this session or this webinar is purely on a, a kind of transformation that is currently happening around the market for coming from a conventional content management system to the digital experience. So uh, the title suggests transformation from CMS to DXP. We will talk about that. But first, um, let me introduce myself. My name. Uh, you are muted actually. Please unmute us. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, Please. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, my name is Molik Nichi. I am working as tech lead at Encora, having 10 years of experience, purely uh, working with the PHP open source technologies, like uh, where we have CMSs like WordPress, Drupal, Joomla and framework like Laravel and Codeigniter. I also have experience on cloud operations, cloud uh, DevOps activities, mainly on AWS. And during Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Someone is muting me, I'm not sure. Okay, hold on just a second. Can you okay. start from the previous slide? It seems like we had a problem. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Um, my name is Molik Nishi. I'm working as a tech lead at Encora. I'm having total 10 years of experience uh, in the IT industry, uh, having work experience on various PHP open source CMSs and frameworks like WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, Laravel, Codeigniter. There are many more. Uh, I'm just giving the highlights over here. I have also experience working on cloud uh, platforms such as AWS doing uh, maintenance, setup, architecting the project uh, servers and all on AWS. And during my tenure, I have worked on many different third party applications, integrations on our projects that I have worked on till now. So that was a pretty about me. Now let's move on to uh, what we have as our um, agenda for today uh, for our webinar. So uh, we will be covering about what is the CMS or content management system. We will look at what it comprises of, what is the usage of uh, CMS system. We'll see various benefits and examples uh, in the market right now, which are you know profound or well, very well known to everyone. Then uh, we will go uh, with a main concept of digital experience platform. So digital experience is maybe uh, we can consider as a CMS, but a superset of CMS. So we'll talk about digital experience. Then we uh, explain you the recent uh, latest market leaders or who are, you know, who are the DXP platforms around the world available, which we can use to have a complete digital experience for our web application. We'll see some of the benefits of DXP over CMS, the conventional CMS, what is the benefit? What are the advantages we are getting from DXP and other uh, details, what we can do with the DXP. 
then we will just have a, a conclusion and uh, references uh, uh, for our um, any of our audiences to you know learn about it in more details and obviously at the end we will have the uh, 15 minutes of q and a session so let's get started um, so what is cms simply uh, in simple word we can say it is a content management system which you can use to manage and publish the content so it is used to manage and publish digital content for website of businesses of all industries and educational institutes so cms platforms or cms is not just restricted for you know to be used by any professional industries or professional uh, uh, people around the world it is something anyone can use nowadays people are doing microblogging blogging in all those things so cms is a kind of we can say a framework or a structure or skeleton which any blog providing platform uses you can consider blogspot hubspot wordpress all of them are a blog kind of a blog manage blog blogging sites behind the scene they are using cms only so uh, in cms we can see there are some key applications or key things that we do within the cms that is content management so what is content management obviously when we are developing a web application or website we will have various pages consider our main home page then about us what we do what uh, our team contact us there are a lot many other pages that we can do so page ultimately the page will serve uh, as an information uh, for our end users who want to understand about our organization industry or whatever uh, we have so that's the content management then we come media management so definitely we won't be having just a textual data because the system are like textual data no one will go in depth to read all of a long articles or long pages so media using media we can have some ui ux elements such that you know it can be a photos it might be a slider a banner or we can embed video so that we can do with cms then we have version management so version management is nothing but let's say um, we have a page that we are developing or that we are maintaining so there might be a chance today we have some information uh, new announcement or something that's happening on the organization tomorrow we are adding two more announcements so we can have a new version of that page keeping the older version uh, as an archive anytime uh, that can be referred so it's a kind of how we have the code versioning we can have our page version management as well then we have content moderation so uh, when talking about uh, digital content or digital content publication there will be a chance that not only a single person in our application or in our system will be doing all those all sort of work so we can have a kind of a content moderation workflow such that let's say we have an editor and we have a reviewer so editor can create the content submit it to the reviewer so reviewer can review and finally publish the content so that comes as a content moderation feature that we have in cms then we have like user management blogs and e-commerce kind of thing so user management is uh, as i mentioned let's say we have two different roles of user so we can have that user role management user permission management uh, within the cms and as i mentioned earlier we can write the blogs using cms platforms now lot of cms platforms are providing uh, ready to plug in system or ready to plug in uh, third party add ons that we can install within our application using them we can replicate any of the e-commerce feature on our website we will deep dive uh, later in this uh, uh, session on that same but these are high level uh, applications of cms now um, let's take one of benefit uh, take examples and benefits so uh, benefits of cms collaborative system where multiple users can update and publish the content as i mentioned as i mentioned where we have we might have a lot many users coming in creating content a uh, few of them uh, will be reviewing it and publishing it and all these cmss are providing a very easy to use or user friendly portals or they call it as a administrative panels where a non technical or non tech person who doesn't know about how to develop a website can just go in log in themselves they can easily see a quick access menu kind of thing 
like uh, add page modify page go over there update your page and save it now when editing a page we might need to have various formattings so like how we have on our microsoft office tools like um, to have format headings paragraphs bullet list uh, highlighting in under uh, under highlighting like underlining bold italic whatever quoting all those kind of features that microsoft office tools are providing for us while we are you know writing the document same feature all the cms platforms are providing when we are editing a page content so using that we can have various uh, formatting uh, applied so that our front end page when someone uh, when our visitors view the page it looks very neatly formatted there is there are features available that let's say there is certain announcement uh, that will go uh, on a certain stage only for example there is a webinar or the let's say take our current example only let's say we have this webinar uh, scheduled for today so we need to market or we need to publish a blog or a page on our website which states about what it is what it will cover and all those information we need to schedule it such that it is available right from the midnight so that any users around the world visits our website they can see this banner or link or detail about the webinar so we can have content scheduled as well so just go in create the page and we can set a scheduling date or a time so when that time occurs the cms system will automatically publish the data and obviously to have our website searchable over the internet we should be we should have a good seo search engine optimization implied uh, applied on our application such that when someone search certain keywords on google mostly we are using google but there are a lot many other search engines also available but whenever someone searches we our website should appear as a search results so that we our visitors can visit our website because everyone might not have our exit website link so for that all of the cms systems are providing lot many advanced features so that we can set a proper description tags keywords and everything that we um, that will help to improve page rank for our website so these are the high level um, benefits or features that cms systems are providing now let's take a look at some of the market leading cmss uh, as you see i have just highlighted couple of i say five of them which are market leader right now but there are hundreds of cmss available around the internet which are which belongs to different technologies so squarespace magento joomla drupal wordpress drupal and wordpress are we can say market leaders right now in terms of uh, you know when anyone wants to develop a cms website and um, all of them have their own structures how we can create pages how we can publish but they are purely depends they are purely a content management system now as i mentioned they provide a kind of add-ons or extensions or ready to plug in feature using that we can have we can create a lot out of it so there are some types let's say static website we can just go on the back end just create five to four pages just publish it so that's a static website that we can do we can include or install any plugin which will make our website or web application a complete e-commerce platform that includes product management order management and uh, uh, complete payment checkout everything we can integrate all those things blogs forums are they were the basic thing or they were the base systems which uses cms on the back end as similar to e-commerce there are plugins available which we can use to integrate on cms platform that will have the uh, that will enable our end users to do an, any any sort of online learning like e learning nowadays e learning is common after the covid era so all of systems are providing the capabilities so that they can serve as a online portal or, or e learning portal so all these things we can achieve using cms so there are lot many thing that cms are providing but nowadays the end user uh, and how are users are interacting or visiting the website or web application is changing drastically now 
that's where the digital experience platforms comes into the picture digital experience platform is nothing it's a kind of a cms but more to a cms so it's a kind of a uh, system where we can do content management but alongside that we can do a lot of other features as well so let's take a dive on that in one by one so what's there included in the dxp so very first thing is user experience now as a cms it will be just like okay you go in create page publish it everyone around the world will use or see the same experience while in dxp we can have a customized user experience such that you know uh, when our individual user from certain uh, demographic or certain uh, age <clears throat> logs into our platform we may need to prompt them with some uh, promotion for our products or anything so that kind of a personalized interaction we can do uh, with dxp navigation obviously a kind of easy navigation around the, the links like quick links easily you can navigate between the platform collaboration as i mentioned users can interact with each other so there would be there can be a collaboration between end to end let's say a kind of a community you have a community uh, you want to discuss on certain topics so you can create that and that can be managed customization we would say um, as i mentioned we can have some kind of a logic or a kind of a artificial intelligence in place so that uh, based on the user criteria or based on the user type we can show different content and presentation so presentations are not just web page because nowadays people are visiting or they are using more of mobile devices when i say mobile devices i'm not just talking about the mobile phones or ipads or tablets there are a lot many things uh, which we consider as mobile laptops ipads mobiles smart watches iot devices any streaming devices all those are you know different types of uh, channels uh, that people are currently using to be connected with the internet or to connect it with the world so considering that uh, dxp provide us a feature such that we can just manage the content and how it will be presented to our end users that we can manage on our own or it will be omni channel such that anyone from mobile or any smart devices can access easily with the ease of uh, access or uh, navigation based on the platform or devices they are using so that's uh, the advantage of dxp now obviously as a platform it is it is a super set of cms so it will obviously have all those feature like content management integrate integrate that means you can integrate third party software systems and aggregate their data to present it so that's a kind of more more feature advantage of dxp that okay it will allow you to integrate let's say a lead management portal or uh, analytics so that you as a owner of your platform or of your system can see how your customers are engaging uh, we'll deep dive later on uh, in the same uh, in the further slides over here i'm just talking about few points so optimizations as nowadays people are becoming fast obviously technology is becoming fast so now if your page or website is taking more than 5 to 10 seconds i would say if it is more than 3 or 4 seconds to load a page people may go away they will find your competitor to look for for their need or look for for their answers so optimization is a more very important things nowadays your page your website your systems should be prompt enough to respond to your customers in a timely manner so that is a part of dxp so uh, then we have workflows so it is something similar that we might have a lot many conditions lot many uh, requirements such that on a certain behavior of our customer on our website we should trigger some marketing emails we should trigger some uh, additional uh, information or share some email to uh, end users or to sellers whatever those kind of event based actions that we have to do 
that can be done with workflow management so that is provided within the dsp platform e-commerce obviously will be there because that's a part of cms so dsp will have that feature and localization now thing is like world is becoming global people are becoming global if you are developing your site it might not be limited to you yourself your friends or your community you might be sharing it on social media and social media is a platform where people around the world can interact so now dxp has the feature have the feature that you can have your website translated in respective native languages as well as you can have certain areas certain uh, modules of your system so that it will filter out the data product let's say we are on an e-commerce site you are visiting it from india so it will suggest you the products which people within india are buying so that's a kind of a globalization if you are visiting from usa then it will have suggestions what you know people in the us are uh, you know ordering or they are looking forward for so that's a kind of uh, localization effect or global but local kind of thing that we are seeing on the digital experience platform or we can say dxp omni channel as i mentioned we have a liberty over here that we can just manage the content and how it will be presented that is purely available depends on from where users are visiting so we can develop our application such that it is available over web mobile application wearables we are meta anything so that's the feature uh, that dxp provides now in terms of architecture okay we are providing so many features so many things uh, to our users so our system on the back the backbone of that system should be capable enough to do all these things right so on an architecture level obviously when we are providing lot many things we should have the security so dx all the dxp platforms around the world comes with some standard security or apps uh, tools you know there are lot many vulnerabilities available around the world so dxps are making sure that the customers application so uh, our business applications are secure enough to sustain any sort of attack or to avoid any sort of attacks mobility as i mentioned when we have omni channel presence and presentations across different uh, users or different channels then our system should be capable enough to be available around the world cloud enablement obviously when we say highly available mobile then it should be on cloud because if you are on on premise system if something goes wrong on premises due to network failure due to hardware failure or anything then your system won't be uh, easily reachable so when we are on cloud there is a complete architecture there is there are lot many things watchers cloud watch and all those lot of those things are available on cloud platform which maintains as well as monitors our application so when they see something is going wrong way they will do a kind of a auto scaling replacement all those things those are pre configured to make sure our application remains as is uh, to serve our customers customer data obviously when we have security we should be taking care of to store the customer data securely so uh, we dsp platforms are providing uh, a good level of data security such that our customers data remains safe without any sort of intervention and uh, as i mentioned dxps are providing some pre built interactions or integrations with third parties as well as it is open so that you whatever business custom requirement comes from a business you can go ahead and integrate those uh, third party systems within the dxp platform so it's about uh, dxp it's a, um, i'm just in a nutshell it's a well defined well integrated cohesive set of technologies designed to enable composition management delivery and optimization of digital experiences across our customer journey so what dsp has all the standard cms features third party integrations personalized customer journey multi channel or we can say omni channel presence high availability social social media integration because right now people are 
mainly finding any new website, any applications or anything on social media. So DSP has that feature that you can integrate easily or market your system on uh, social media platforms. Headless CMS. Now, now what is headless CMS? So headless CMS is nothing but a CMS system where the content can be managed like how we are managing on conventional CMS without worried about how it will be presented on the front end side to our end users. Now that's will that will leave a kind of a headache to our non-technical person because they might not know that, okay, I need to present or, or I need to share this data to my customer, but they might not even that capable how to present it. But the DXP the, uh, system, who are developing the DSP systems, they know about it. So they have a pre-built set of front-end architecture. We can use React.js, AngularJS, React Native, Xamarin. Those are a lot many technologies available around the world right now, using which we can develop the front-end. So they are purely dependent on an API. So when, once content has been developed on the back-end of the system, we can have the APIs to call the content and present it on our own way. We can have our own mobile application develop and that application will just need to fetch the data from the system. So the content person or content management people doesn't nearly need to bother about how you be presented because that presentation would be based on a predefined or a design, well-designed front-end templates or structure based upon the respective devices. So that's, we call it as a headless CMS. Then we have data analytics and business intelligence. Now, as we mentioned that DXP provides a personalized, localized experience to our customers. How that has been done? So behind the scene, we need to have the data. And to have the data, some kind of analytics should be there. So DXPs are providing data analytics, or we can say business intelligence, AI-based, ML-based systems, such that they, behind the scene, understands the customer journey, customers' interactions, customers' behavior when they are on our application. And it learns from that to provide a more niche or more user-specific uh, data or content. As an example, you can consider, we can consider Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram right now. Though they are social media platforms, but behind the scene, they are doing this kind of business analytics or this data analytics only like what people are searching what people are looking forward for so same concept we can develop on our application such that our application can also become a kind of very customer friendly or we can get a personal touch or we can give a personal touch to our customers so that customer will engage more to our application they will they may promote our application as well because they are liking it, their friends, their family members can like it. So in this way, business are analyzing their customers' behavior. And using that, they are optimizing how to manage their customers' integration or interaction with the system. Now let's talk about some of the market leaders. In our previous slide, we go on with, we read about few of the CMSs like Joomla, WordPress, Drupal, Sitecore, Squarespace and so on. Those were the conventional CMS systems that currently exist and people are using it. But when we talk about DXP, so in digital experience platforms, there are more than 50 to 50 plus DXP platforms available around the world. I am just uh, taking one of the research uh, reference over here that was published by uh, world's leading uh, research company Gartner. So they have published this DSP leaders magic quadrant. So over here, they have considered two main aspects, completeness of vision, like how robust or how feature rich that particular DSP platform is and ability to execute whatever the business or organization or institute comes with a requirement how easily or how efficiently that particular DSP system or application is able to apply the or execute the requirement. So based on these two criteria, 
they have created four quadrants so that there are challengers leaders niche player and visionaries so niche players are like crown peak core media progress kentico squeeze so they are we can consider them as new into the market but when they say niche player that means they might have their presence on certain geography or certain uh, industry domains to serve them better because there exists let's say i am from plastic industry or i am from a civil architect kind of a background so i may need some platform or system which understands my technical terms to serve my clients better so niche players mostly deal with those kind of requirements then we have visionaries like bloomridge and magnolia they are obviously doing that uh, niche experience but alongside that they have more to add to it so that you know alongside your complete requirement they add more feature for reaching to the larger audiences around the world then we have challengers so challengers are good in terms of executing the need or executing the business requirement where we have some good or very known names like salesforce oracle lifre hcl and open text leaders we can say they serve everything business requirement add it add more on to it having omni channel presence analytics i have analysis business intelligence customer engagement lead generation all those kind of additional a kind of a tool that makes dxp over and above the cms so leaders are like sitecore acquia optimizely adobe in adobe especially we call it as a adobe experience manager that's what adobe call it so that's those are the leaders around the world which are you know leading the digital experience platform so as i mentioned previously dxp is a super set of cms so it can includes all the cms features and additional ones are like personalized user experience integrating with third party systems for business analysis analytics pro identifying customers engagement behavior you know optimizing the user experience providing more personalized touch to their users or their customers so uh, quickly we can just uh, go through like what are the added benefits of our cmss so business will have more control over their digital experience uh, as i mentioned how we or how business wants to reach to the end customer web mobile wearables iot's any smart devices around then we can have forms workflows management for lead generation obviously when someone is visiting your site you want to convert them as a customer to have a repeated customer or engage your customer base so a good lead generation uh, platforms are integrated within those dxp platforms there that we just uh, seen uh, in the last uh, previous slide so that whenever come some someone comes in fill out the inquiry form or contact us form gathering the data reaching out to that customers uh, by our marketing team by the marketing team of the business all those things can be easily managed at one platform better business insights using modern analytics tools ai and ml based systems identity and access management so cms provides user management over here dxp has a more on to it that is identity and access management so over here it may uses a single sign on a kind of a unique identity or single source of identity system where let's say organization has their own identity and authentication mechanism so using that permissions and roles whatever i have organization has defined on their end these dsp platform can incorporate the same and have a user account or user profile created within the dsp platform with the same kind of roles and permissions so that they can uh, visit or access the respective content on the dsp platform segmentations and personalization as we mentioned we can have a demographic segmentation localization uh, for our platform to reach more of our audiences around the world personalization to have a personal touch 
to an individual user so that they feel uh, scared or they feel like okay yeah the system are you know really care, taking care of what i need or what may i am looking forward for multi channel support around the world whatever the smart devices available use them to visit or access your dsp platform and scalable cloud based system so that system doesn't go down when there is a high traffic peak hours or peak season coming in and it can easily serve the large user base so these are the some key advantages of dsp over a cms now so conclusion would be like DXPs are the future for managing digital presence of any organization or business. So ultimately, till now, I would say since last 15-20 years, we we were used to work with CMS systems to have a digital presence for our business, for our organization, or we can consider our educational institutions as well. Going forward, if we take the example or the benefits that DXPs are providing. business or organization can think of more than just to have a website or a web application we can consider how we can specially target to our end customers how that will be beneficial to business as well as our end customers and take the route so dsp is more than just a content giving more insights on necessary improvements and marketing and growth so business will have a clear picture or clear vision on where they are sending or what their customer their customers are doing so where they need to improve themselves like some products are not getting enough visits or enough selling then how to promote them all those kind of business uh, decisions may be taken by just looking at the data received from the dsp analytics system so gradually what we are seeing is in next coming Two to five years, the conventional CMS might be completely taken over by the digital experience platforms because they are adding more to it. And nowadays, we are seeing a new technologies coming in, variables, VR, augmented reality, metaverse, and all those things. So people will definitely would like to see whatever is available, but that should be available across any of the smart or digital devices or digital platforms. And nowadays. Uh, uh, on a, or here we can say talk about few things on the encore side. So we are seeing our customers are also trying to engage themselves, such that um, you no know, they can utilize the benefits of DXPs. So we can say the future of content management and public content publication would not be just a CMS platform, but it would be surely a digital experience platform, or we can say DXP. so um over here i have just quoted few of the references that um, uh, we have taken during the uh, for the uh, for our uh, presentation on you can reach, definitely go to their site to research or you know understand more about what is dxp how it is different from then the cms and what are the key benefits all right so that's all i have um uh for a today's session all right um i am done uh, with my presentation
all right uh that was it uh, that i had for today guys i hope you have enjoyed it understand what is dxc what is cms and how world is currently changing thank you for joining this session today thank you everyone
ಹಲೋ